so this is a, a, a Gauntlet Hangouts event. We are playing um, Deep Carbon Observatory with the Black Hack, and I'm a uh, host, your uh, referee. So um, we already wrote uh, characters, and we see your characters for the first time. You are um, you've heard these rumors of a mystical place full of treasures and knowledge, and um, you've heard that it's somewhere upriver behind a dam uh, that broke uh, recently. And while you're walking through um, the wilderness towards a, a village called uh, Karomir, um, please describe uh, your characters. So um, why don't we start with James? James, who do we see when the camera pans from one character to the other? Sure. Uh, so this is Agfan, and he is a. Um, he doesn't look like much. So he has a mass of tangled hair and is wearing um, almost like a, what you would see as a street person wearing, just a simple, simple clothing that's dirty and sort of stained with food. Um, he has sort of a, a necklace uh, that carries a religious symbol that's just made of. Um, no precious metals or anything, just simple like stone wood. And uh, he's a cleric of the order of the low god, the god of deprivation, emptiness, poverty, and humility. Uh, and is happy, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. Uh, not too concerned with his material state and is along for the ride. Awesome. Uh, and what's the symbol of the, the low god? What does it look like? Uh, it's just a circle. Just a circle. Simple. Like um, Franciscus or something. Mm -hmm. And um, Paul, your character. So the camera pans from uh, Agathon to the next. Um, yeah, and you lay eyes upon uh, Eucharist Tarwater, um, who is a extremely corpulent, uh, like a big fat, bloated man like every 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 single part of his body seems like almost like swollen with a um with excess you know he's got a big fat jowly face with a uh, a shaved like bald head his belly like sticks out over his uh over his drawstring trousers um and he's wearing um wearing some robes that are a really faded like dark red color uh, with some arcane sort of symbols like brocaded down the front of them. Um, he's got very, very bushy eyebrows that almost look like two uh, swamp caterpillars like crawling up above his above his eyes. Um, <clears throat> um, and yeah, his his robes are sort of stained with what looks like sort of grease and maybe maybe sort of blood like down down his front, and you can't tell whether. It, whether it was from like a some particularly uh, violent, vile sacrifice he committed, or just his, his, his lunch like spilt down his front. That sounds scary. Mm. Um, and let's see, uh, Richard. So, uh, traveling alongside uh, and and frightened of the conjurer. Uh, but never ever one to admit it uh, is uh, Dogen Curry, uh, and he is a uh, he's a former slave, uh, and uh, spent many years forced to work in a ship's galley, uh, but uh, still carries the spear that uh, he killed his way out of that galley with. Um, his his clothes are pretty battle torn. Um, and he, he makes a lot of wisecracks and is otherwise, uh, pretty, uh, casual, but, uh, even though he's, he's slowly sort of recovering his strength from his years, uh, being broken in the galley, um, he's still pretty scrawny. Awesome. And then last but not least, um, Tobia. Yeah. So we see this uh, pale older man, he's probably in his 50s, and um, 
is like as a religious acolyte of what is probably is like the main religion. It's the kind of Catholic Church analog. Um, despite this, is a thief. He's been a religious acolyte for a long time and completely unable to receive like the word of his God. He stayed at the lower ranks for 50 years and he saw years and years of this youth kind of growing up. And he just resorted to like stealing from the kitchen and he never really understood the, the holy books. And finally got caught stealing and he just kicked out and he has got something to prove uh, in order to go back. So he's seeking a sign from his God. Uh, and he's got his tonsil, like all of the acolytes. And he's got this greasy kind of long hair and he's frail and he looks incredibly nervous. He kind of darts his gaze around. Uh, and do you still believe in your God or have you never actually believed? I absolutely believed, and I can't understand why my God just wouldn't give me a sign and why I, I'm treated so unfairly. I'm, I'm bitter, but still faithful. And what's the name of your God? Uh, I think it's something very mainstream, it's like the Father of Light. Father of Light. And uh, then I have a question for Agathon. What's the, the relationship between uh, the low god and Father Blight? The so, order of the low god uh, looks upon the riches and the power of the god of light and his followers and uh, finds it hollow. It's <laughs> empty, it's worldly, it's uh, corrupt. And the only true religion is that of poverty. And who among your um, fellow heroes do you um, think could be converted to the low god? Probably not uh, Eucharist, who is really, really bad. <laughs> I have hopes for everyone, which is why I've agreed to carry his torches. Uh, <laughs> That maybe I could make some room, but I'm, uh, but more likely I think uh, Kale Wolf because uh, he's had this experience of falling out of his religious order that perhaps then could come aboard with me. Uh, awesome, and uh, I'm probably saying your name wrong. Uh, Eucharist. Yeah, that's correct. Eucharist. How does your um, spell book look like? Um, I imagine it's uh, it it barely even looks like a book. It looks more like a really well worn like menu from a tavern, you know. Um, it's kind of really uh, it's very thin and like sort of sheathed between two uh, really well worn like leather sort of covers, and then it's sort of bound with this uh, uh really tattered looking twine. It, you know, it doesn't look like majestic at all you know it's not it's just a, a a greasy like slip of kind of a book that he keeps like inside his robes like in the inner pocket yeah, almost like a pamphlet you know it's like that kind of size like sort of pulls it out uh, and, the, and the pages are covered in sort of grease and dirt it's pretty gross <laughs> and the the two spells that you have memorized uh what are they Okay, um, I have um, sleep and charm memorized. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, you have three uh, because um, everyone is uh, level two. I probably failed to mention this, so you uh, also. Yeah, right, I, I only rolled as, as level one, actually. Yeah, so you have to um, roll your hit die again. Mm hmm. Ah, okay. And it also means that you have um, three spells memorized. One, uh, like three uh, level one. Ah, oh, excellent, three level one. Didn't realize that. Um, in that case then. You can cast all your spells mm -hmm. um, from your spell book, but these are the ones that you have memorized. Ah, okay. And I have a question for uh, Dogen Curry. Um, you are tattooed, I guess, I think. Let's see. 
I'm sorry, what was the question, sir? The, the question was, you, you are tattooed. Um, are these uh, tattoos that you um, chose? Yes, yeah. These are, uh, originally this was uh, sort of the brand tattoo of when I was taken as a galley slave, but it's been decorated by the uh, the slavers, by the by the emblems of slavers I've killed. Something that I can't, I can't think of off the top of my head. I think uh, something that... Uh, Instead of covering it up, I've sort of I've sort of circled it, hung a lampshade on it, and just like everybody I killed, getting getting free. And uh, would would people recognize that you are a former slave because of the branding? I think if they could, if they see the tattoo, they would they would they would recognize it. It's on my arm, but I wear a gambeson, so I only show it off at night at a bar. Awesome. So. Uh, everybody um, rolled their uh, hit dice for the second level as well and added uh, the additional hit points. All right, so um, you're walking um, through the wilderness. Uh, it's, uh, I would say, late summer. There's, it's, uh, it's still warm, but there's like a cold um, like touch in the air. And uh, while you walk towards, while you emerge from the wilderness, you see before you, um, like a, a scenery of chaos. While you approach Karomir, um, you get deeper and deeper into the water. It starts, um, you know, maybe knee high. And then if you approach the, the village further, it gets up to your hips. And <clears throat> um, you hear, um, people screaming, um, crying. You hear the the water rushing uh, against uh, wooden walls and um, you know between buildings, people um, try to um, climb up the the roofs of the village. Um, there are people in the water trying to swim, uh, and three scenes um, stand out uh, for you. There's a uh, there's a almost naked man and he's carrying a, a bundle um something wrapped in linen uh, and you can assume that it's it's a body there's hair sticking out of it uh, and he has a, a he's, he looks um distraught he's um obviously stressed the the, the body uh, he's half dragging half carrying it um, then there's uh, a man, uh, you only see his upper body uh, and head, and he's um, clutching a, a log. He wears uh, yellow robes, as far as you can see. And he's, um, he's trying to hold the, uh, the log, but he, his, um, you know, his uh, grip is slipping. And then... Uh, you also see a uh, a makeshift raft. Maybe it's a barn door or something. And there are old people huddled on there, and small children. And uh, a man is trying to um, uh, to hold the raft and to steady it, but he also is about to slip. And you can interfere with these three um, scenes. Um, you can split up. Um, but, for example, the man is walking towards the wilderness. Um, the, the, uh, the, the religious, like the, 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 the person in the yellow robes uh, is uh, more or less straight before you and the, and the raft is moving to the side. So you can split up, you can pick one, um, but if you split up, you will move uh, apart from each other. So, 
What are you doing? So the between the raft and the log, which is closest to something that looks like dry land? Um, neither. The dry land is behind you. So the the man with the with the bundle is moving uh, towards dry land to like to get higher ground. Because I'm thinking, like, which looks like it would be easiest to interfere with or intervene with. Um, the easiest is probably the the man with the log, because it's okay. just one man. You can just grab him, uh, but then you would ignore the the children on the raft because that right. is moving. Well, let's like hack down like a big sort of branch from somewhere and, and grab in the guy that's floating on the log. And then if we got some rope or something, we can throw to the people on the uh, on the raft. Yeah. Um, if I if I move towards the people on the raft, what's the what's the what's the land I'm on like? Is it am I going to be needing to? Am I need to wade? Am I going to? Yeah, have, you would. You're wading uh, through water, and it's uh, it's uh, waist deep. And towards the the raft, it's uh, it's getting deeper. Right, right. Um, so so Dogen is uh, approaching the raft, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to get without moving too fast. I'm trying to get with wrap. I'm getting a rope out. Uh, I'm trying to think of what. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get that. Just getting rope out right now. And Eucharist, you were uh, about to help the. Uh, yeah, the I'd like. Yeah, I'd like to pull off like a, the biggest sort of branch I can see, like within a uh, distance, and and sort of try to throw it like throw it out to the to the person on the uh, on the log that's near and, and bring them in and uh, Agathon, what are you doing? I think Agathon is immediately drawn to the raft with uh, old people and children and is just waiting in that direction already uh, and kill wolf um, I think kill wolf would like to kind of have a look at the man in the road but to try to understand what kind of order you might be part of, if that's possible. Yeah, so so you're walking towards the naked man. No, the the, the man that looks like a religious. A religious oh yeah, yeah. The, the man yeah. with the log. Okay, cool. So I'm kind of like walking behind Eucharist. So Eucharist is getting active, and he's kind of like a bit timidly, kind of being behind Eucharist, and maybe like he passes him a rope, mm -hmm. and. While doing this, is kind of looking at the man, trying to understand. Um, so, uh, Dogen, you're throwing the um, the rope, or you're getting the rope out, I guess. I'm getting the rope out. I'm getting. I I'm, I'm want to signal them. I know that you don't want to get too close to people who are in a frantic drowning situation, or you're going to you're going to drown with them, rather than rescue them. So, I think I'm I'm trying to get them. A good third, you know, get as close as I can. To, I think that they'll catch a rope and then uh, throw them a rope and sort of pull them back into shore. Uh, so you're throwing the rope towards the the children and the old people on the raft, or towards the guy who's who's losing his grip at this very moment. I think Eucharist and Kayla Wolf have uh, that, and I think if Agafin and I can go towards that, I, I'm going to throw the. The, I'm aiming at the ra raft. So, so there's also a man uh, at the raft, and he's trying to to steady it. But right. this very moment, he loses his grip. So, do you throw the the rope to him or towards the the children and the old folk on the raft? Um, are they looking at him? Or are they looking at me? They like the, the old people. They have this uh, thousand yard stare. They they have obviously I don't know. They they, they will uh, accept their fate. 
and the children they actually look at you some of the, the older ones and they they look very um sincere and they're not like some of them crying the the, the, the smaller ones are crying but the older ones um they behave very um they have a sort of, sort of composure right so if possible, I'd like to throw about half of the rope to one of those oldest kids, and then I want to start looking around for a tree or something that uh, I can hook this rope to so that I'm not dragged along after the raft sort of willy-nilly. Uh, so mm -hmm. one of the um, the older kids, a boy, uh, catches the, uh, the rope and um, winds it uh, around um, like a uh, what's it called? Like a, a log. Um, so, meanwhile, um, so, Eucharist and Keowulf were together? Yeah. And uh, how do you try to um, rescue the, uh, do you try to rescue the man? He's, yeah. We his head is now underwater, he still uh, grips um, the log. Um, yeah, so we've got, we've, I've pulled off like a big, uh, the, the big long branch that I could find. And I've, I've tried, I'm sort of wading out until the, uh, the water sort of gets up to my neck. And then I'm, I'm trying to splash the water near him with the, uh, with the branch to get it, to get his attention to grab onto the end of it, to pull him in. So let's see, I'm, I'm using, uh, the world of dungeon dial fate. Let's see whether he grabs your um your branch oh, what did i roll i get to two um no it it's he he is trying to to reach it but he can't what do you do and he's like some his head comes out of the water. He's coughing and sputtering, and then he uh, disappears again. Um, okay, well, um, I'm going to like turn around then to Seal Wolf, and I'll be like, "You better go in after him. I'm too fat. I'll sink." And I'll like push. I'll push. Literally push Seal Wolf like deeper in and go swim. Get save him. He's a man of the cloth. Uh, Seal Wolf uh, was uh, yeah. He was looking really indecisive and kind of like. Um, you know, getting the, in the head in the spotlight. It was like this, holding this rope, and then this giant man pushes him, and it's kind of like for a moment. He's dead. You can resist if you want. You you're not a doll or something. If you don't, no, no, no. To... He's, I think he's quite doll like. He just goes in. His head goes down for a second, and then he comes out, splitting water, and then he kind of like looks at this man and goes like, "The rope." Rope, Babe, he tries to kind of like while almost going down himself, tries to throw the rope towards this man. Um, so let's say, um, let's make a, a, a dexterity uh, test to see if you hit the, the, the arms that come out of the, the water. Yeah. Um, so my deck is 11. Yeah, you have to roll 10 or lower, with one being uh, extra, like... And I'm rolling a D20. Yes. Perfect. I rolled a 3. That's, that's really good. So you, you actually hit the, um, the arm, more or less, and he grabs it. Uh, and you can um, pull him out. So let's get back to uh, Dogen and Agatha. Uh, Dogen, you um, you have the rope in your hand, and you feel the tug of the the raft um, pulling you towards deeper water. What do you do? Uh, how close by are, are you, Agatha? I had originally just sort of gone up to the, towards the raft, so I think I'm much closer to it than 
you don't know how far away it was or if I would have had a chance to reach them yet. Um, but I might be able to grab the rope closer there and 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 give right. you some. So what I'm looking for is something I can sort of kind of wrap the rope around to sort of give my give myself some leverage. Mm -hmm. uh, a tree stump. Yeah, there's a there's definitely uh, tree stumps nearby. A very sturdy person. <laughs> you know, a, uh, a rock. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start sort of going around the tree stump so that I do not get pulled after the raft. Uh, so um, at this very moment, um, uh, Dogen and uh, Agathon, uh, you see um, uh, on a uh, roof uh, a woman um, that looks very, very haggard, uh, and indeed she has a, a hungry look in her face. It's it's another scene that um, pops out of the the utter chaos, uh, and she has a, a fishing rod, and um, you also see uh, another woman, uh, a little bit in um, more shallow waters. She she almost passes you. She has a a, a wild look, uh, tussled uh, hair, and she's screaming. Unclean meat! Unclean meat! And passes you. Um, uh, and uh, Eucharist and Keowulf, uh, you also see the woman, but you also see, like, you um, you have the rope in your hand, and the guy has grabbed the rope, and he comes out of the water. And uh, a couple of um, yards away from that, um, you see mother, uh, you see um, um, three children in the water, and between them is a floating uh, corpse, a person, and they are screaming, Mother, Mother! Uh, what do you do? So uh, let's say uh, Agathon uh, and Dogen. You're pulling the you're pulling at yeah, the rope. I, yeah, I cannot let go of this rope, or it's gonna pull the tree up, or the, the you know the the raft of the tree could pull each other apart if I don't sort of. Over to you, Agathon. Is uh how is how are we doing so far with this raft? Yeah. Are we? Yes, you've steadied the raft. Um, the the kids hold on to the to the rope. It doesn't seem as if they were uh, able to you know pull themselves closer to you but and at least not in immediate danger the man who was originally holding onto the raft is he did he get sucked no, under he, or is he around no he's around he's trying to push the raft towards uh towards you and the stump okay um i guess what i'm trying to assess here is does it look like this raft still needs my help or am I, if i walk away can i intervene somewhere else um, I think you can intervene somewhere else. Um, I mean, it's such a chaos. For example, the man who holds the raft, he he looks completely exhausted. So he's mm -hmm. he's pushing the raft towards the log, but or to, to, towards the stump. But whether or not he succeeds, uh, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in that case, I better stay close. the 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 low god is hard at work in this area, <laughs> and I'll just. <laughs> I'll stick to my task. So um, you you ignore the uh, the screaming woman that passes by. Yeah. Uh, about um, Eucharist and Keowulf, will you uh, will you interfere with the the children and the floating body, or, or, or is your main objective to get the uh, the guy out with the ropes? Uh, well, Sea Wolf is like Sea Wolf has got the you know he's got the rope like pulling the guy out. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> um. So yeah, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start splashing like deeper into the into the water, uh, and I'm gonna grab hold of this log that this guy was like uh, that the guy was hanging on to, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try and use I'm gonna use that as like uh, like a, a like a, a ballast aid. And, and try to sort of paddle out towards like these kids. 
Awesome. Um, so you you pedal away from uh, Keowulf, um, and you close uh, you close the distance towards the uh, towards this um, body that is floating, uh, and the children they they see you and they wave and they scream, "Help us!" Uh, and like in between like mouthfuls of water like i'm like <clears throat> hang on hang on there children <clears throat> hang on there eucharist tar water is coming to save you <clears throat> um and yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna like pat i mean this is this is really hard going for eucharist you know he's not the most athletic of people but uh the sight of these three kids like drowning he he can't let this he can't let this go by so he's, he's going to try his best to save them so i'm going to paddle sort of straight towards them and try to try to get them to sort of hang on to the log that i'm holding as well. so you, you you paddle a bit um towards more um shallow waters and <clears throat> you, the the kids themselves they seem fine uh, i mean that the, the water is up to their uh, breast i guess um to the chest but um the body in the water that is floating um they they can't um they can't pull her out of the water so okay so, so the kids are the kids are like not in immediate danger of drowning the the kids themselves are not ah, like okay. they're crying for their mother ah see so yeah so yeah you chris didn't realize that he like thought that he, he thought that these kids were like drowning and like now he's he's sort of reappraised the situation and all of a sudden he's forced with this, you know, he's faced with this situation like, oh my God, do I have to touch and like drag this like drowned body? Um, yeah, so he's going to do it. He's going to, he, yeah, he's going to grab this like corpse, like by the, try and grab it by the, by the feet or something like, and, 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 and sort of swim with, hold it by like one ankle and then kind of swim with the other one, like towards, towards the shore. Yeah. And the, the, the children, um, they they hang at your um, clothes and follow you. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dogen and Agathon, you uh, were able to pull the raft closer. And uh, one of the, um, a small jo uh, girl, uh, she jumps from the... Um, from the raft and and swims towards you, uh, and she stands on the log and she makes uh, a gesture with her hand as if she wants to whisper something into your ears. Um, while the um, the the guy uh, that uh, tries to steady the um, the the raft helps other the, the older people uh, to get down towards uh, dry land. I, being the charmer that I am, I lean in and listen to the small child, uh, whatever she has to say. So she whispers in um, a hushed tone. She, she says, once there was a bad old woman who lived in the corn and hated rhymes. She made all the mums and dads into ghosts. So all the children killed her. She had nine lives. And couldn't die the same way twice. They poisoned her first, then they stabbed her, and smashed her, and burned her, and drowned her. They killed her seven times, and threw her in the well. That makes eight. If you kill her once more, that's it. That's a, that's a great story. That's, that's absolutely lovely. It's not a story, it's the truth. That's a great true story, then. That is an absolutely great true story. Um, yeah, it, I, you know, don't work with children a lot. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I, I kind of pick her up and hand her to Agathon, who, being clergy, has to be great with kids, just, you know, as part of the job description. And uh, when you pass her on, she says, uh, she's still there in Pollingallum village. Pollingallum? Um, Pollingallum. 
pulling Gollum. Look for her there. Uh, and uh, let's see. This is very chaotic. Um, so we have uh, we have a kill wolf, and you're helping the priest. Yeah. Um, what point is it? So he wears um, uh, yellow uh, robes, uh, and he has a holy symbol around his uh, around his neck, which looks like um, it does look like uh, a, a looking glass. So it's, it has a, a metal frame and then a, a glass piece. Uh, and um, he points up river and says, my church, I wonder if it's still there. Kill Wolf um, hands him, is wearing the holy symbol of the Father of Light, which is pretty abstract, just a square with a circle within it, and like kisses it, and then passes it to the guy and says, kiss it, fool. The father of light just saved your life. <laughs> and he says, I, I think uh, the father light. I, I, I think that the optical god and the father of light, they are like brothers. No? Brothers, the father of light is one. It's higher than all the others. He doesn't have brothers. He has sons, he has children. We are them. Be it as it may, you you help me, and I humbly ask you to to look if the church is in is is in good condition still. He kind of like looks down, and he's like, "Where is this church?" Uh, and he points uh, to the north, uh, and he says, "It's it's half a day's travel." Um, meanwhile, uh, so we have, uh, let's see, uh, Agathon, you are with, uh, the, uh, the corpse. No, I think that's, um, yeah, that's Eucharist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eucharist. Eucharist. Yeah, Eucharist is dragging the corpse out. So, um, Eucharist, while you drag the corpse towards um, the uh, the higher ground, you see um, like freshly dug graves. It's it's already on 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 the dry land, and there's a man um, crying in front of uh, the graves. Um, but we also want to see what Agathon is up to. So you. You have been handed uh, a, a small child. What do you do? Did I overhear this sort of nursery rhyme about killing a woman eight times today? Yeah, you, you were close enough to, to hear it. Okay, so, you know, as I'm carrying her toward the shore, and uh, all the, the kids are now basically moved to yeah, safety. The kids, exactly, the, the man helps the kids and the old people towards, uh, you know, towards higher ground. Okay, so I think I'm just carrying her toward the shore and asking her about the rhyme, and uh, that's a nice rhyme. Did you make that one up? It's it's not just a rhyme. It's it's what happened to us. All the all the adults, they were they were turned into ghosts. They didn't they didn't do what they wanted to do. They did what she wanted to do. Your parents too? My parents too. They're still there. In the village of Pollengollum. Yes, sir. And who are these people to you, this man and these old people on the raft? Are they are they family? No. Um my grand uh, parents they died, but they are grandparents of of other kids. And the man is Kalau. He could get away before the, you know, we killed the witch, but she came back. And we must kill her one more time, you say? If you do, then the, the village would be free again. 
and our, we could return to what's left of our village. Will these folks care for you? Will they care for you as if you were their child? Well, if they have food, they will share. But we and have would... two days. Oh, well, then he's going to reach into his bag and share some of his, uh, what do you call them? Rations? That's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rations. <laughs> so I'll roll so, my, uh, I'll roll my use die. I'll reroll this great <laughs> one here. And I got a three. So that means there's still some left over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still have T uh, four rations. Okay. Um, but I assume all the children are, are hungry this way, huh? Yes, they're all hungry. All right. Um, I... uh, you see that um, one of the children um, is talking to a, a strange man. Uh, he's... Um, He's standing a bit um, further away from the others, and he, uh, he he crouched down and seems to to say something to the child and and makes like a, a motion to follow him. Okay. Um, I'm curious about. I think currently uh, trying to get rid of all of his food and feed the, feed the children uh, with an eye on. Uh, where where is that man taking the other child? Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, you're surrounded now by children, uh, and they all ha hold out their uh, hands, and some of them uh, take the food and bring it to the elderly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's difficult for you to get away, I guess. Right. Um, but um, Dogen, you see that as well. You see that. Uh, uh, did I see where this, this guy came from? Um, yeah, he came from um, he came from uh, higher ground. He came from where um, Keowulf and uh, Eucharist are. And uh, so he's not drenched the way everybody coming out of the village is. Uh, oh, he is. He is. He was okay. um, at some point. He was in the water. Uh, and who's the kid he's talking to? Is it one of the smaller kids, one of the older kids? Uh, it's one of the smaller kids. And he's trying to lead them off in what direction? Uh, towards uh, even higher ground, towards the wilderness, more or less, where you came from. It's, so it's the same direction we'd want them to go, or it's, it seems to be an, often a kind of a veered off separately? Yeah, separately and veered off. Okay, yeah, I, I just approached him just like, hey, uh, why don't we uh, all start moving that way as a group? And I point to where the, you know, Father Agafin is, is passing out food uh, for everybody. Why don't we all just start to head that direction? No going off by yourself. So let's see. Uh... Uh, he oh he's a guy um so so the the guy uh, makes uh an offended uh face i i'm i'm just here to help i mean if if you want to take care of the children uh, you can of course well you know, we you know we we could use all the help we can get um but uh, why don't we all just head that way, the way everybody's going, up towards the ground that way? Uh, and I look at the kid. Like, is is this a friend of yours? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen the man, but he gave me something to eat, and she she has like a a, a sugar cone or something. Oh, that's 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 really nice of him. Uh, <clears throat> Where are you from, sir? I'm I'm from uh, I'm a respected uh, citizen of this very fine village, and you are. I I was traveling and saw people in danger, and uh, you know, so we're we're all we're all new to meeting each other. I pat the kid on the head, and why don't we all go this way towards Father Agafin? Yes, of course, but I have uh, 
other things to do. Farewell, my friend, and uh, keep a good eye on this kid. And he, uh, you know, slinks away, like trying to move away from you. Uh, has she been eating whatever he gave her? Uh, uh, yes, she has okay. like sugar around her mouth. Okay. I uh, kind of gently, charmingly brush the sugar off her mouth and carry her back towards the, uh, the other kids and adults over, over that direction. Uh, you never saw that guy before? Uh, no, but I'm not from this village. Oh, you're not from this village, are you? Okay. I'm from uh, Pulingalu. Pulling Gallo. Oh, I keep hearing about Pulling Gallo today. <laughs> well, uh, in the same raft as the other kids. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, keep hearing about Pulling Gallo. And I just, uh, so do you know any of the people around here besides the other kids? Are those kids your, are those people your grandparents? <clears throat> and she, she points to, to an older man. Uh, this is Grandpa. I take her back towards her grandpa. And um, while you do that, um, you see the um, the guy who um, who moved away from the scene, like the the guy who talked to the kid. Um, he's um, walking uh, towards. Uh, he's walking towards Agathon. Uh, sorry, sorry. He's walking towards uh, Eucharist. So oh. Eucharist. Eucharist knows uh, the sleep spell, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he can do whatever he needs. He can take care of whatever he needs. Um, Eucharist. Yeah. While you um, you carried the uh, the, the the corpse to uh, to a higher no, 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 no. I didn't I carry know. it. I didn't. Carry, I I dragged it by the ankle. I didn't like come out of the water like. You know, I'm trying to lessen as much contact with this thing as I can. So the, the kids, yeah. the, the kids try to to keep her up, and um, and while you, I don't know, drag the body uh, behind you, you see um, not far away from you. I, I told you about this this man standing uh, next to a shallow grave, mm -hmm. and um, behind that. There seems to be a, a mound of, yeah, uh, like a grave mound, maybe, uh, and um, and the mound is moving and shaking a little bit. Uh, what What do you mean when you say grave mound? What like a, like a freshly a freshly like kind of filled in grave? Uh, no, like a, a a mound of dirt, but oh, okay. um, there's like. Uh, body parts sticking out like, like there's a leg. Oh god! <laughs> An arm. Oh, this is hor This is horrendous. But it's moving. It's it's a bit weird. Um, so I'm gonna sh uh, shake this this guy this this person who's like uh, what is he? So he's like sobbing by a graveside. Uh, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this body and like and and shake him, shake him, <laughs> get into his senses and be like what. What the hell is going on here, man? What what is going on? Like the, what the, the, have you? Are you these bod bodies? Are they have they even been buried and consecrated properly? I he he cries. He's he's uh, ancient looking. He's really really old. Uh, and is he just sobbing? Is he just like crying? That's it. Yeah, he's he's crying and sobbing. His uh, hands in front of his eyes. I'm gonna slap him in the face. <laughs> so, um, make a charisma test. How does, like, how <laughs> do you react to that? Okay, so that's so you need to roll d20 under charisma, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I equaled my charisma. So. It's a, it's a, it's a fail. <laughs> So, yeah, he, he stares at you and he says, 
what is the purpose of this all if your whole family is dead if there is no use there's no there's nothing left in life and he stands there with her his hanging shoulders and like an empty stare uh, while a because man we need to fight I say to him, like, yeah, I just want to shake him and say, why are you giving up? We need to, we need to live with these people. Because there's nothing to live for. You may have friends and family left, but I, I've lost it all. And while he says that, there's a, a, a man passing. He, he has, uh, he's, he's also like, um, no, he has been in the water as well. But he has uh, a bit finer clothes, and he walks towards the um, uh, towards the mound. So uh, let's see what is Keowulf up to. You were talking to the um, the yellow robed um, yeah, man. Um, but from there, you like you're still talking to him. Uh, yeah. Tried to ask you uh, if you could um, check out his church. Um, I think here what it says. Um, Kendall stops for a second when once his man has told him where the church is, and then he says, "Nonsense! Useless! Useless holds. They are useless. What's happening here? What's happened here? The 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 flooding? You mean? Yeah, this chaos." The, the, the dam broke, I don't know, like, maybe a day ago. Um, what can I see from here? Is there other people, like, needing help? Like, the naked man is, is there still, the, like... The naked man is gone. He, he disappeared hmm. into, the, um, into the wilderness. Um, what you see is... Um, you see a man on a uh, on on a roof, and he is looking through um, like a spyglass towards the north. And um, you see that there's a, a kid that sneaked up behind him and is um, is a, uh, like um, trying to steal something. Hmm. Um, and the guy also seems to be um, uh, to, to to be a cleric. He has he has robes, um, hmm. but a bit finer clothes uh, robes than the one that you uh, what you are talking to. Here, Wolf um, looks at the kid with a smile, remembering all the times he's snuck in the kitchen to steal food and he stole um, prayer beads from the other acolytes and looks at the cleric he's talking to and he kind of like just goes like this like ah useless and walks towards this man underneath the house and goes you there and the 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 guy with the um with the spy glass he uh, looks at you what do you want who are you what are you doing everyone seems to be freaking out and you're just looking at the stars um Well, there's, there's this pillar of smoke. And, and while you are both talking, the, 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 the kid um, gives you the thumbs up <laughs> and climbs down the, the building. Okay. Um, guys, I really need to pee. So shall we have like three minutes break? <laughs> Thank you.
quite a shit start to an adventure isn't it just like just being dumped straight into this crisis wow <laughs> yeah it's super confusing <clears throat> and chaotic mm. <clears throat> i like it i like he's having to make choices it's like so many options and you just kind of like run around trying to understand what's going on it's really fun yeah, it's like you're having to do like triage. It's like you know, what, can you help this person or should you help this person? It's like, and you, you can't save everyone. Basically, I think that's the idea of it. It's like, no yeah. matter how hard you try, you can't you can't save the day. Basically. So let's see. Um, I need to like really pinpoint where you are, guys. Um, so. Uh, Dogen, you just walk back from that suspicious man back to the group of uh, people, like small children and uh, old folks, where and Agathon, yeah, and, and together with Agathon, yeah, um, and like Klau, the the guy um, that um, steadied the raft, um, he is um, checking on the old people. And while that is happening and you're standing there, um, you see um, people um, shouting at each other. They are, um, um, they are also standing on dry ground a little bit um, uh, further away from you, but you can hear, you can hear them um, shouting and screaming. Uh, and it seems as if uh, a guy is about to be lynched. Like they, um, they are shouting, and that now they are um, throwing a, a noose around his, his neck. Whoa! Whoa! You approach them. I think we better go check that out, eh? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna set this. I'm gonna hand off the the kid to. The guy who was busy studying the raft, whose name I've forgotten, and Kalau. Then, uh, Kalau, yeah, and just be like, "All right, she's yeah." Um, and then I'm just gonna like, "Hey, did everybody in this town just suddenly turn into an asshole after helping each other out of a broken dam situation?" You, you say that to the people who are about to hang him. Yeah, you all just yeah, yeah. You all just suddenly turn into assholes. Did, is that what happened? He, he stole food. From whom? From us. And the 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 soul the the, the guy who was about to be hanged, um, he uh, he wears some kind of uniform, like a white not not a uniform, but um, like white uh, a white shirt and white trousers, um, and like a a sailor hat. So. He's probably a sailor, uh, and he says, it, "It wasn't me. It, it really, I swear, it wasn't me. I didn't steal. Why would I steal? We have enough food on the ship." Really? You shut up," says someone. "I saw you." Why don't you shut up? And I mean, you look intimidating as fuck. He does shut up, but glares at you. It is a. I glare right back at him. <laughs> um, 
and the, 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 the first guy who talked to you, um, he says, um, it's a pack, it's a pack full of food and it's gone. So you're just going to randomly hang somebody? No, no, somebody saw him. Are you... That guy? Because that guy has liar written all over him. Uh, the, the guy who glared at you, he moves back into the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starts running away as soon as he's challenged and has liar written all over him. And uh, actually, uh, Agathon, you are also there. Um, and I mean, maybe a, a couple of steps uh, apart, but you do see a, a pack lying in the dirt. A pack like somewhat like the one they were just describing. It seems like it. So there? Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you mean? Look there in the dirt. And, and uh, I'll, I'll walk over there, pick it out. And and you see uh, the people like being really ashamed, uh, letting go of the the rope uh, and turning away. And while you turn away, um, you you hear shouting and screaming even further. Uh, again, back to towards the village. And there's uh, there's some kind of stand down. Uh, the, the the sailor, by the way, uh, walks up to you, uh, Dogen, and he, he shakes your hand and uh, pats you on the back. Man, that that was super close. Uh, they they nearly got me. They're crazy. Where's your ship? Uh, it's over there. Um, you have actually I, I failed to mention it, but. When you approach the village, you could see uh, the ship behind uh, the village where um, the river had been before everything turned into a river. Oh, right. Okay. So just kind of what whatever would have been like the, the riverboat dock. Yeah. All right. And there's like a two-mast um, ship. Uh, but before uh, you can even talk further, it looks as if there's... Uh, there's another altercation, and this time it looks uh, even more serious. There's some some uh, fighter types and a, a, like a weird wizard woman, uh, and they uh, they are shouting at uh, another woman with some kind of authority. She has a a staff, and maybe the the village I don't know like chain around her um, uh, her neck. Some, some person of authority and these uh, three adventurer types they they shout at her and, and intimidate her but let's um, move a bit back to um, let's see uh, to Eucharist so Eucharist and the the moving mount of body parts and the old man. Um. Well, the, the old man, I, the old man, I, I, you know, he, he's just blabbering to me. He's, he's nothing to me. So I, I literally just like push him away, almost like push him down to his knees, like, um, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a step towards this, this mound of, of, uh, <clears throat> of moving body parts, because, God, are they, are they, are they burying people alive? I'm thinking here, is this what's going on? So yeah, um, I want to, I want to investigate this, this mound. If you if you move closer, um, you can. Uh, so it's it's the mound is also the place where the the guy that passed you um, disappeared behind, uh, and you can hear uh, two people talking to each other, uh, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you do? Um, I gonna. I'm going to stop in my steps and, and, and listen to this conversation that's happening. What, what are they saying? So the man says quietly, um, but it didn't work. There was a, a warrior and, and she got away. So the woman says, so it's just corpses again. Well, they, 
the man says. They are relatively fresh, aren't they? Mm. Sounds like they're looking for fresh bodies for their nefarious <clears throat> necromancy or something. Yeah. I can't stand for this. So I, I, yeah, I'm going to step around the mound and confront these two. Um, uh, with, with with my staff drawn, you know, trying to appear as threatening as I can. So um, you see that they are uh, that the woman is actually um, like pulling um, corpses out of the mound, uh, and the guy turns around and says, "Who are you?" <clears throat> I'm Eucharist Starwalker, and I'm the person who's going to stop you from desecrating this grave. And I'm going to, like, bash this woman's hands with my staff to make her drop, this, drop the corpse. Um, yeah, make, a, make an attack roll. I think you surprise them. Uh, so you roll under your strength. Uh, what what is your uh, intention? Do you want to uh, harm her, or is it just a, like a, a slap on the wrist? Yeah, it's just like just like I want to make her drop this corpse. Out. She's desecrating these these this grave. Um, which I'm not going to stand for that. Yeah. Um, so, so, so let's see how uh, how well you like. Maybe you hit too hard and break her arm, or maybe uh, you don't mm -hmm. uh, hit her. Okay. As well. So how, so making an attack roll. Do I just roll un under my strength? Under basically, strength. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I missed. That's a fail. So, uh, make a. I reclaim decision making. I roll another uh, d6. Let's see. So the reaction. And I would say, uh, so high is good for you, and low is bad. So um, she uh, grabs her knife and tries to stab you. What? <laughs> so now we're in a, a combat situation. Um, so. She's trying to stab you. What do you do? Um, I, 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 I take a, a, a step back. Like he, he's surprisingly, you know, surprisingly nimble on his feet for a large man. Uh, tries to take a step back, like out of her the range of, of her stab. Um, and I have I have my charm spell memorized. Um, so like under my breath, uh, I'm gonna. Um, Recite the incantation for the uh, to charm her to stop her from attacking me. So you can in every um, like combat round you can do uh, a couple of things. You can move and do one action. Mm -hmm. uh, avoiding her knife sounds like an action. That would be yep uh, the, the action that you have. You could also accept. That you get stabbed and maybe just uh, incantate your spell. No, I don't want to get stabbed. I'm moving out of the way first. Like self-preservation is is the. the so roll under your decks. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, massive miss! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um... Oh, I'm so used to XP on a miss. <laughs> I, I, I would have been raking it in if this was PBT. <laughs> no, there's no XP for a miss, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so she... Uh, let's see how um, hard she hits you. So it's two. Do you have uh, armor? I have, t yeah, I have, I have two armor. Uh, underneath so, my robes. Yeah. So, um, 
I mean, you can narrate how you uh, avoid the. Uh, uh, no, you, you don't avoid. It. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh you, no, I don't avoid. It. I don't avoid it at all. Like uh, maybe, maybe like as I take the step back, I kind of slip like on the on the wet, like muddy ground. Exactly. Um, um, and maybe I even like slipped like to the ground, like into the mud, and she kind of like like plunges the knife like kind of into my back, but it kind of it kind of uh, it glances like off of the the armor that I, the that I've got like on, on my back and just kind of. Slips off into the dirt. So, in the next round, we see who has, has the uh, initiative. So, roll under your decks to see if you go first. Is that how it works? Yeah. yeah. You test your. Yes, I, I, I managed to roll under my dexterity there, yeah. So, you can do something now. What do you want? <clears throat> um, so, now, like, uh, Eucharist is like on his hands and knees, like in the mud. Um, uh, and like with his with his face like down like in the, in the mud, he he recites this incantation of charm uh, like under his breath, um, directed towards this woman that's just attacked him. Mm -hmm. well, um, so how do I, how do I do that? How how do I see whether a, a spell works or not? Uh, so the um, the spell works in any case. The question is, uh, do you keep it? So you you test your wisdom if you um, forget the uh, if you lose the spell slot. I'm sorry. Okay, I see. So I, uh, I do. I I failed my wisdom test, so I lose that 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 spell slot. Exactly. But sh um, so. Um, what do you say to her? <clears throat> um, like I, I, I whisper under my breath, I, I whisper the incantation and it's like, you are my friend, you are not my enemy. <clears throat> and her, um, her face, um, like clears and she, she, uh, lightens up. And she says, oh, my friend. Yes, we got off on the wrong foot. I apologize for attempting to hit you with my staff. And now you apologize for attempting to hit me with your knife. And now we're all friends. Are we not here? For, are we not here all friends? Um, what does the guy do, though? Um... Yeah, like, does he realize that, like, she's been, like, sh like uh, charmed under my spell or yeah. what? I mean, how does your uh, how does your spell manifest? It's just the mumbling and, the uh, like, the, the incantation. Yeah, so like, it's, it's, like, literally, like, mumbled, like, under my breath. Like, uh, <clears throat> um, and then the, the command is like almost like something. I, I like the idea that maybe she, like, repeats, like, everything I kind of say, you know, in, like, a sort of positive sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I apologize, she says. I apologize for stabbing you. And uh, the guy looks from you to her and from her to you back. And um, I think he attacks you, actually. So, so he's tried to... Um, he doesn't have a, a, a... Oh, he has a knife. Nice. He, he's trying to stab you as well. <laughs> so he gets his knife out and tries to um, stab you in the neck. Stab in the neck. Oh crap! And um, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna uh, take my staff and sort of do a big like haymaker swing and try to knock the knife like out of his hand. That sounds like uh, you test your dexterity again. Okay. Ooh, I rolled a one. That's good in this game, isn't it? So, um, so yeah. Uh, I think you can achieve what you wanted. I think you wanted to um, to knock the the knife out of of his hand. Yes, that's correct. Um, so that's the bonus, but you can also give uh, damage. Um, yeah, I mean, if this because this guy's, you know, the 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 woman is. 
you know, she's charmed. She's not going to attack me. So this guy, I, I knock the the knife like out of hand. It, it goes. Oh, I like the idea that it goes like flying and sticks into this mound of like all the <laughs> body parts, like, like yeah. that. Um, yeah, and then the, he's got like this sort of surprised look on his face because he wasn't expecting me to move that fast, you know. Um, oh, and I'm going to take, I'm going to take my staff uh, and with like the the actual blunt end of it, like bang like right in his face like that like right in his nose and like break his nose but you can also give him uh like actual damage with your staff yeah that uh, that is that's actual broken nose like that i should say <laughs> yeah there's a numerical value attached to uh the broken nose um okay so how do i roll for damage is that like do i just see what a staff does like basically uh, yeah you have uh, a damage associated to your class Oh, I see. Oh, uh, 1d4. Yeah. Uh, unarmed or improvising, it says. Uh, <coughs> I don't know, but I, I think it's a d6. D6. It's the because you're wielding the staff. Oh, so it's with the staff. Okay, so I, so I roll a d6 to, to break his bloody nose, yeah? Let's go for it. Uh, oh, that didn't roll. Uh, oh, I rolled a one, so maybe not a broken nose, maybe a, maybe a, a bruised nose instead. <laughs> I, I actually do think that you break his nose mm. and um, I'll make a reaction roll for him because I don't think he's used to um, somebody hitting back. Uh, again, low is, I think on a four to six, he will try to flee. Yeah, he he turns around and tries to get away from you, but I think you get a, a like an attack of opportunity if you want to. If you would want to, you could uh, hit him without rolling. Oh yeah, my my attack of opportunity when he when he turns and like runs, I'm just gonna grab like scoop a big handful of like mud out of the uh, out of the mound and just lob it at the back of his head. To, you know, and be like, get out of here, you scoundrel. Uh, and your newfound friend, he stares at you. Well, what is this about? What's going on here? What, what, this pile of, are these people buried alive in here? Oh, they are all dead. Then why are their limbs moving, I say? Because we were digging. I like them. I like the brains. The aged ones. And what do you what what exactly do you do with these brains? What we do with them, we eat them. There's no food left. Um oh, and with this, um yeah, I, I, I want to sort of like baseball bat swing my staff and wrap the back of her skull. <clears throat> and you want to hurt her or yeah, I, out? I, I want to kill her. She's Jesus. an abomination. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to surprise her. She still, I mean, she stops thinking that you you are her friend. I'm but... not her friend anymore. I'm not her friend anymore. No way, no. Um, I think you just give your damage. I mean, she's completely uh, uh, surprised. Mm -hmm. So that's my D6. Uh, so I give her two damage with a, with a staff to the back of the skull. <clears throat> yeah, you hit her over the head and there's uh, like um, blood uh, on the back of her head. And she falls to her knees and she, she looks confused for a second. And then she uh, looks around and tries to uh, get to her knife. She jumps to her knife. And I think it's time to roll uh, initiative again. So you test your uh, dexterity to see if you can move before her. Yeah, I rolled a two, so I can. You're a killer machine. I mean, um, so yeah, I, I want to. Uh, can I say so because I rolled before her? Could I could I reach down and pick up her knife? 
uh, yeah, you can you can um, step, you know, in front of her and, and just um, and just get the knife. Yeah. And so um, she sees that, and then um, she turns around and tries to run as well. Yeah, she can get away. Because uh, if she comes anywhere near me, I'm yeah, I'm stabbing her in the throat. Dirty cannibal. Indeed. So let's see. Um, we haven't heard from uh, Kill Wolf for a long time. Um, so after the um, the kid, um, you know, uh, like ran away. Uh, do you stay with a guy on the roof or um, because um, you also see um, from uh, from where you are the ship uh, and it seems as if there are um, villagers on uh, you know wading through the wall and then are actually on boats rowing towards um, the ship and they have literally um forks uh sorry uh pitchforks and torches mm. and they are quite far from me down boats right they are a little bit far away from you you can also see the um the 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 boy who slipped away like he uh you can still see him um you know trying to get away from the the roof of the the house mm. i think and uh Work will um, kind of try to go behind the house and wait for the boy to jump down. Um, yeah, so so you can, um, yeah, the, the boy jumps down and so he startles when he sees you. What do you do? And he just puts his hand up and is like, Hey, 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 don't want your loot here. Just want to know what's going on. We just arrived. He says, I, I have to do this. They have my sister. Who are they? If I tell you anything, they will kill her and then they will kill me. And he will try to put his arm on his shoulder and grab it, like keep him in place and saying, you will tell me, kid. Um, are you trying to intimidate or like persuade? I'm more intimidating. I think he's trying to be like, no, 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 you are telling me. I'm, I'm here, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> um, yeah, test your charisma. Yeah, I wrote the one. So his um, it seems as if you broke his um, resilience. He starts to cry. He says, I, "I cannot tell you their names, but they, but they, they kidnapped my sister, and if I don't bring them this, and he holds up." Uh, some scrolls. Um, I will never see her again. And they have eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> hey, Wolf grabs the scroll and is like holds them up. It's like you're not getting this until you talk. Um, I think by the time that there's a face looking down from the roof. Hey, you! These are mine. <laughs> Everyone goes up looks at the kid and goes like shit and kind of like shoves the kid and kind of like runs away probably towards i imagine if i kind of see um eucharist i kind of run in that direction stuffing the scrolls in, in, in his thing yeah i think from where you are you more or less have to um to swim the first couple of meters to get to eucharist so you you, you are um you know, in, really in the water, and the kid is as well. And the kid is following you. He's swimming behind you. 
And um, the wolf is swimming and he keeps looking back and it's like, I lost kid. And he's just kind of like waiting for the water. All right. Um, so I think you, um, you, um, oh, let's see, Paul is, Paul is gone for a second. So um, you will um, meet with uh, Eucharist. Oh, there he is. There he is. Um, so, um, Eucharist, when, um, when Keowulf uh, approaches you, what, uh, in what kind of mood are you? Are you like shaken from what you've seen or are you in a glorious <laughs> mood? Yeah, no, uh, Eucharist is, <clears throat> um, he's horrified. He's horrified. You know, the fact that, you know, he, he, he's just like risked his life, like to save, you know, save people. And then there's people here who are you like, they're vultures, they're human vultures, basically here preying upon people. Like, it, yeah, I'm disgusted. Um, and maybe, maybe when, <clears throat> maybe when Seawall finds him, he's, he's like squatted down, like, uh, with his back, like against the mound of like dead bodies, like just kind of, just like kind of stroking his chin, like, shaking his head like disgusted um so in in the commotion you haven't realized that the old man actually has uh, hanged himself so when um seer wolf uh, approaches um uh, eucharist <clears throat> eucharist is, is kneeling next to this uh, disgusting mound of uh, earth and body parts and in the background there's there's an old man hanging from the branch of is the this tree. is this the old man who i slapped face slapped earlier yeah, yeah this oh, is the old God. who was next to the the shallow grave fucking hell oh <laughs> that, so um Keowulf, um you see um you see um a eucharist in a in a state of i don't know like shock or repulsion and um he's got a bleeding back right he got stabbed in the back by the woman uh you, i mean the the, the knife is not out of his back or something uh and i don't think that you can there's no blood or anything no so, it didn't take any harm that the the, the the blade okay. like slid off the armor so okay so he, he kind of arrives and ignores um uh eucharist mood and he kind of goes like oh crazy here what the hell is going on they're eating people <laughs> he kind of like he's taken it back for a second these goddamn savages they're eating the dead they're pulling them out of the water <clears throat> and they're eating them they're eating their brains <clears throat> we, we are we are we are here in we are in a, a a literal cesspit of humanity here ask yourself like when you look around and you see these people need saving and you have you have to ask yourself can I save this person or this person? Or this person? Think to yourself: Do any of them need saving? If they, if we are saving a bunch of infidel, depraved, perverted cannibals, do any of them need saving? Um, you see um, a, a, a boy running uh, up from behind uh, and trying to um, grab the scrolls that uh, Sea Wolf has under his arms. Oh, oh where, where have you put them? Uh, just kind of like inside, there's a bundle inside these ropes, but you can see them. It's yeah. kind of like it's kind he's of trying to grab them and run away. Uh, but um, Sea Wolf doesn't see this, um, Eucharist sees it. So while this is happening, mm. and you think about what you will do, um, so there's the sailor who, um, who um, thanked uh, Dogen, uh, and you can interact with him. But there's also this altercation, um, you know, very near you, where this woman of authority um, is intimidated by 
uh, adventure type guys. And there's, there's like a crowd of people, the people who um, were surrounding the, that were trying to hang the man, just moved on to uh, another problem. This is an and, entire uh, village of drama queens. <laughs> it's also reality yes. television. Uh, Agathon, and I look at the sailor. Can I get his name or? Um, yeah, he's called. Um, uh, I need his name. Hold on. Uh, he's called Galwin. All right. So I, I, I look at a. Uh, yeah, when I can, can we just you know you're you're a you're a sturdy guy. Can we borrow you for for just a moment? Yeah, yes, um, sir. Of course, you, you saved my life. I just you don't have to call me sir, but you know that's that's you know whatever whatever you like. But uh, Agatha, can I borrow you as well? Are you finished giving out food? I don't have food anymore since the kids were left. So I think we're, oh, we're all right. We're uh, we're ready to go. I'm with you. All right, all right. So, let's 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 go be the goddamn the the non asshole adventurers. This is, so let's. This is new for me. <laughs> you were supposed to be the asshole, but now everyone is worse. Yeah, yeah. So the scene is there's uh, um, there's this woman with a staff and the. Uh, like a, an official chain around her neck and in robes. And um, she's an older woman uh, and she's making like steps back um, because she is uh, harassed, uh, harassed by uh, like a, a blonde bearded giant uh, wearing a, a broadsword in one hand. And he has a, a chest plate, a bronze uh, chest plate. Um, a step behind him is a, a, a woman in robes. Um, sh, um, from where you stand, she looks um, really beautiful. And then there's uh, some kind of weird, uh, I don't know, sorcerer of some kind uh, with, with facial uh, tattoos. And he has a, a, a glowing mace. Um, the people um, surrounding the scenery are mostly um, village folk. There's some kind of weird-looking scouts, and there's like two or three uh, people in the same white shirts and white trousers like uh, Galway. So I think I'm going to, you know, he's showing off his tattoos. I'm going to show off mine. Roll the sleeve of my gambeson up and... Uh... Just walk over there, make sure we've got Galwin and Agatha with me. Uh, there a is there a problem here? The the three um, adventurers I described they turn around, and now you can see that the that the the sorceress has one beautiful side of her face, and one is uh, wizened. And um, the the guy with the uh, with the chest plate, he has a bronze eagle uh, uh, on top of it, and he says with a growling voice, "I am Alfredo John. Who are you to disrupt us?" You know, you're just having a very public argument, and uh, there's lots of stuff going on. People need help. And uh, it seems like uh, we might all just be able to talk this out. Well, what are you, a scholar? Uh, I, I think we have one with us, maybe. I am Alfredo Jan. I will smash you. All right, that seems like it will get you nothing. It accomplished very little. Uh, also, you know, you would not be the only person to try to smash me, but that it also accomplishes a lot for nothing. Yeah, you're really not going to get a lot out of that. He looks a bit confused. Um, you know, what would you be trying to accomplish by trying to smash me? I will kill you. 
what again again what what how does that get you closer to what you want some of the people around start to, to giggle um i i am the great alfredo jan my strength talk for me i look at agathon and i'm just like is is i think he's really not goal focused i think you know not a lot of not a lot of critical thinking skills and not a lot of uh not a lot of ability to really kind of assess how strategies get him to things he he wants to accomplish you're uh, talking as if i'm not here i can hear you yeah you you've this said is... nothing you've been talking for for three minutes and you've said nothing that 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 has made any sense uh so i'm, I'm we're going to talk about you Unless you're gonna, you know, just stop thumping your chest. Um, the the tattooed guy, the the mace stops glowing, and he looks uh, at Alfredo like, um, in his mimic is you gonna do something or what? He's not saying that. Uh, does it does it look like Alfredo's just talk, or does he? It, is he coming at us? Is he just sort of boasting and he, he has pumped himself up. Um, he has not made uh, like an uh, aggressive move yet. Did you get the conflict between him and the woman was, or just that people are standing around to watch? Um, I mean, what you heard from the conflict when you were approaching was that the woman said, uh, I'm not going to do this. You have no authority here. That's what you heard. Do we recognize that golden eagle on his armor? Um, it's not a uh, it's not a symbol of uh, like a an order or it, it's more like just uh, like some people have a e golden eagle sprayed on their Ford Mustang. That that's that kind okay. of. Yeah, I just didn't know it was a specific company or mercenary group or anything like that. Uh, so I, 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 I believe the, uh, the last thing that was said is you have no authority here and, and, and then you would have a rational response to that, either establishing your authority or establishing why people would, would do what you wanted to anyway. You talk to that you, 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 I, I tend to make sense when I talk, so I think I talk about the right amount. This is Vestorok, the sorceress, and this is the Dormitor, and I am Alfredo Jan. We yes. will see you again. This is not the last time you see us. Remember our names, Jan. And he turns around and moves away. And the, the mystic shakes his hand with the tattooed guy and uh, and the woman just walks after them. And um, the, uh, uh, the, the older woman in the robes, she um, smiles at you and she says, uh, I'm Lady Hrat and I thank you in the name of Karomia. This is your village, Karomia? This is... The, the village I rule over, or what is left of it. It's, it's, I can see you're having a rough day. It's, it's a lot of people from Pollingalum, a lot of, a lot of people trying to instigate trouble. So where are you from? You know, around. And what are your plans? You could help uh, rebuild the village, maybe. Uh, I, I, I look at Agatha and we're just, you know, you get yourself out of these situations where people have expectations of you all the time, right? Is what I'm not saying to you. <laughs> uh, I, I will interject and say, uh, we head north toward the source of the water. Oh, this is great. I'm, 
you I really need to know um, and I will pay you very well if you can get me an accurate report of what happened. Could you define very well? Um, I'm giving you. I mean, I just a rough approximation. It's, it's fine. A thousand gold pieces, and you can get a skiff. You have to give us the skiff back, but you can keep the thousand. I, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing. We've just made friends with a sailor too. <laughs> um, Gerwin, Galwin looks a bit um, like taken aback, and he says, "Well, just, I already have a ship. Just just go with it. Just go with it. Go with it, Galwin. Go with it." Uh, well, yes, I'm a sailor. Uh, I can sail. So. Um, I just want you to 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 row or sail upriver, assess the situation, uh, and if you would give us uh, hard evidence about what happened, uh, you will be paid in full. As in, what caused the dam to break? You don't just need to know that the dam broke. Yeah, we want to know what caused the dam to break. Uh, to, uh, what caused it to, uh, to break? Dogan, I don't know what you're thinking, but Agafin is thinking like, this is a yes, like we want the boat. We want that money. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, do we tell her yeah, right? I, 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 I'm, I'm in favor of yes. I think yes yeah. is, a, is a great great thing to say when offered money. So she uh, points to uh, a skiff. It's, it's, uh, it's not a, a, a big boat. It's like uh, seven meters. What is it? 20 feet. So it's not small. Uh, it has like, um, a, like a, a, a bamboo uh, roof in the middle. And some kind of small, uh, like small hut, let's say. In the front, there's a, a bamboo sail that can be uh, moved uh, to uh, both sides. Uh, and then there's also a rose and a rudder. I uh, I put my arm around Gowan's neck and go. Can you can you work with this? I can sail. Yeah, but can you work with this? I mean, like you know. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're officially my favorite person who operates a boat around here. This is a great skiff, but I am a, a sailor from uh, the snail shell Zaratuza. So we should take that instead up river? The, 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 my ship? Yeah. Oh, no, we can't sail up river. I mean... Well, actually, we don't know if we can, but I, we don't want to be stuck somewhere in between. Right. So the skiff would be a better better bet for not getting stuck. You'd be able to, like, you know, get out, haul it back into uh, deep water, you know. So you're right. So, yeah, yeah, they think this, you know, you sailing this would be the best option. Well, I'm not going to argue with you on that. I think you, you you're right. You're correct. You you scaling this for us would be the best option. So, <laughs> um, Dogen is trying to confuse the guy into doing what charm. he wants. It's, it's, it's charm. It's charm. <laughs> it's a, some kind of charm. Uh, test your charm or your charisma. I have to say. Uh, don't fail me now, charisma. Against all odds, I have botched that charisma roll. <laughs> so he says, uh, "You're not my captain. I have. I'm, I'm really thankful, and I can show you some tricks. I mean, it's actually you, you move the sail around. So 
um, but I cannot uh, abandon my post. All right, I, I I have to respect that. I have to respect that. But you know, you just you know. All right. Okay, let's let's go back to the um, to the very grim scene after some kind of com comic relief. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Eucharist, you've seen the boy trying to steal the scrolls. What do you do? Um, so how, how close is this kid? Like if he's, cause if he's within, is he, is he like close, close or is he just nearby? Like, no, he's he close. Out? He's behind, uh, he sneaked up, um, uh, behind kill wolf and is, is now trying to grab the scrolls. He's within reach. Oh, really? Um, I'm gonna like get up from my sort of crouch position, uh, raise my staff like with both hands over my head, and bellow like in my deepest voice. I bellow, I am the conjurer, you curse Tarwater, and young boy, if you touch those scrolls, I will turn you into a goddamn frog. Oh, wow. Um, make a charisma save with advantage. <laughs> with advantage means 2d20 2D and you can pick the one that you prefer. Okay, so I don't want that one. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, well, they both fail, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Keowulf, you feel that um somebody is oh actually do you i mean you hear you you heard obviously uh eucharist um addressing somebody behind you and at the same moment you feel that um the boy is trying to steal uh the scrolls back you will like start to looks back sees the boys and he says between his teeth you again and he tries to kind of like give a backhand and kind of like slap him, uh, probably like slap his hand, but also quite like move out of anger. So it's quite it's putting his power behind it. Um, and yeah, you, you obviously want to um, prevent him from stealing the scrolls, or do you want to punish him, or you want to uh, slap some sense into the guy? I think uh, He's angry, so he wants to punish him, and by doing so, stopping him. He wants to hit him, so he stops, but he's also like, kind of like, he's out of this frustration and anger, he's like, you get off. Um, okay, so uh, uh, test your um, strength, I guess. Hmm. Oh no, I rolled the twenty. Ooh, a twenty. Yeah. <laughs> uh I think Yeah, I think that uh, you you're trying to hit him. He ducks under uh, under your uh, hands, uh, and before you actually uh, realize what's happening, he's already like ten uh, feet uh, away with his crawls, and he goes back to you and and you know runs runs towards I curse him. I curse him from a distance. I'm like, yeah. you scoundrel! I'll find you. I'll find you, and then you see. I like that idea. Like, 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 he's already like 10, 15 foot away, and the kid just like laughs and like that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem is he was, uh, yeah, he definitely makes a rude gesture, but he's not laughing. He's he's not stealing for fun. He's stealing because yeah. he has to do it. And then uh, I look back to um, 
Eucharist and go like, this place is cursed, this flood, probably from the Father of Light, the purge to clean this um, peasant from this place. Yeah, this this is full of this place is full of cannibals and thieves and murderers. I think we should I think we should leave this place as soon as possible and get and get down towards the dam. These people are doomed. <clears throat> Our efforts are wasted here. So uh, uh, as if uh, to prove your point, um, you see um, that the, the sailors uh, and the, the villagers are now in full combat. The, the villagers trying to climb on the boat uh, and the sailors um, trying to knock them back into the water. Um, and I think we uh, like fast forward a little bit. You you are standing, you are, the four of you standing around the skiff. Um, and I don't, I don't know, do you um, exchange information? What do you tell? What do you don't? Or you just relay the information? Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, Eucharist is going to let everyone know that, you know, that he thinks this place is completely doomed and like gone, gone to the dogs, you know? Uh, well. Yeah. And the people can't be saved here. This is a lost cause. What about the what about that crowd from pulling Gallo? Are they are they kind of mixing with the villagers? Are they sort of keeping to themselves? What are they doing? What, what have they been doing past tense? Um. So you do see the um, you do see the the raft. Or the yeah the the barn door whatever it was it's still attached um, to your rope, um, but there's nobody um, around anymore. Um, I think you can see uh, on one of the rooftops um, like um, a couple of older uh, older people are sitting and staring uh, out into you know into the wilderness. All right. Well, I'm gonna go retrieve my rope and uh, meet you guys. I'm telling you guys, uh, we have a job, and uh, we we have extra pay for what we were gonna do anyway. So uh, I'm not upset about that. Uh, and uh, you know, all's well that ends with a thousand gold pieces. So. So. By the time um, you like, uh, assuming that you you want to leave, um, by the time you're leaving the, the village, it's uh, it's about noon. Uh, and there's a do you do you want to leave or do you want to do anything um, before leaving? No. No. Eucharist, maybe no. Okay, so um, so who of you have sailed before? Uh, and um, so there, there are, I would say, uh, a couple of positions you can take. So um, Dogen is sailing. He's he's with the sails. Um, and do do you want to follow? the original river or do you want to like go uh, as straight as possible like before you there's a there's a, a landscape underwater there's to, to uh, far to the right there's a, a, a big uh, hill or to be honest it's it's like an island that is that wasn't uh, here and uh, let's see uh, and there's the, the the wilderness to the left to the um, to the west um, but other than that it's it's like uh, it's like a big lake I mean you can, can we see the path of the original river um, that is possible, but then somebody has to really focus on that. You can you can see the current, um, and you can definitely follow the river. But it's it's easy to um, 
you know, to, to lose track of where you have to go. Well, I, I mean, Eucharist recommends that we stick as close to dry land as possible. Because if this thing, like this this rickety little skiff we were on, if it springs a leak, we don't really like stuck out in the, in the middle of deep water somewhere. Actually, I'm gonna, I, I will disagree with you, Chris, just on uh, this point that uh, I think we should uh, stick to the original course, the river as much as possible, because if we, uh, we are much more likely to spring a leak if we drag over something that used to be under that that has not previously been like the stuff that the original course of the river will be deeper and we're much more likely to spring a leak if we go over a submerged tree or a submerged house or something like that mm. Care then, to <clears throat> i bow to your nautical knowledge uh i i you know I, that's just that's just instinct i was usually kept below decks and and uh just told to row then why don't you row right now? You're you're my favorite, Eucharist. You you are my favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, once a rower, the, always a rower. My father once told as, me. As, this is also a sailboat. <clears throat> uh, and Eucharist like licks he sticks out his greasy tongue, like, licks his finger and sort of holds holds it up in the air and he's like, I feel not much of a wi not, not much of a breeze today, sailor. Well there's a little bit of uh, of a wind going enough to um, to sail slowly. Uh, but you can also uh, roll obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'll start. I'll start trimming the sails and getting ready to set out. Uh, so, what is everyone doing um, on the boat? Uh, Eucharist is like preparing a meal for everyone, because that's what he's good at. So he's gonna like take take some of the pr provisions, like. Uh, from his pack and like start preparing like a meal uh, as basic as he can. It's going to be like preserved foods and stuff because everyone needs I, to keep their strength up. I, I have fresh rations right now. If we want to use those for the uh, for the meal, no, no, that's that's okay, rower. You you row, I'll cook. It's fine. And um, so so to describe. Uh, I have a photo, but I don't know how to share it. I will. Um, let's see. Uh, I will uh, paste it into work. So then you can tell me where you are. I have like a hundred windows open, that can't be good. While Dogan prepares to um, row, um, Carol Wolf uh, probably touches his back and says, I'd like to help, you know, but at my age, my back, ah, it's terribly hard, and I wish I could, but, you know, it's better I, know I don't. I'll play for us. And he kind of like goes to the back of the boat and kind of sits down and starts taking a nap. So you're in the back of the boat. Where the rudder is, and I'll be up front. Agatha is at the front of the boat, maybe looking for the current, trying to direct uh, 
keep us keep us on track with the river. Awesome. So but also see- looking out for whatever dangers or, or help is needed out there. Okay, so uh, Agathon is in the front together with uh, Dogen, who's sailing, and then Seawolf uh, is in the back, maybe uh, steering a little bit, and then uh, Eucharist is... If you, if you look at the, um, the character keeper, and then it's called Sheet 1, that's uh, more or less the, the, the skiff that you are. Uh, okay. Sailing in. Um, and so, uh, I think, Agathon, you, after maybe half an hour, uh, the, the food is maybe, I don't know, how, how long does it take, uh, Eucharist? What, what are you doing? I mean, it's just like, it's very basic, like, perfect, some, uh, you know, I'm using the fresh rations, so there's some... Uh, maybe there's some pears that I'm slicing, uh, some, some like some quince jelly, um, and a, a very small, a very very small amount of kind of uh, uh, like cured ham or something like that, you know, and a, and, a, and a loaf of bread that I kind of make up, and you know, it makes it makes a small meal for everybody, and 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 walks and goes around and hands it out to each person. Um, so yeah. so while you're uh, getting the um the ham uh Agathon, you see to your right um two men in uh in weird robes in two different robes um they have symbols on their robes uh and uh, let's see they, they, they seem to stand on the water as if uh they're the Jesus type, and they are uh, making weird hand gestures, uh, and that's what you see. They're off to the right. They're off to uh, yeah, they're to the um, to the east. And they are they're not talking to us or interacting with us. They're off always. Yeah, they're facing each other. Uh, one of them is uh, rather um, plump. Um, and he has a like a, a red scarf that is floating behind him, uh, as if there's like a magic wind or something. Um, and uh, opposite to him, there's uh, like a very tall, a very like thin figure um, with. Um, with a gigantic, uh, like wizard's head. Wow! And does the current go in their direction or some other way? Uh, the the current goes like you would assume that it's not uh, that, that it's ne- like either on the uh, river or like on the banks of the the former river. Okay. So and Dogen is nearest me, right? Yeah, but he's uh, he's behind the sail, like operating the sail, so you can't oh. see them. So I'll say, Dogen, look to the east. Either the water is shallow there, or they walk upon it. I don't know. That sounds sort of sort sort of a you know religious thing, walking on water, right? Not in my faith. Well, you know. Um, Is there anything familiar about the symbols, or is there anything about the the way they're walking on water that would suggest that they know where the rocks are? Um, it's difficult to make out from where you are. You would have to, um, you know, get a, a bit closer to to make up the symbols and to to um, discern if they are floating on the water or like standing actually on rocks that are just uh, under the water. When I start cutting us that way, I'm not going to get too close because I don't want to find myself on the rocks. So while you're approaching, um, you can see that one of them is now uh, conjuring some kind of flame 
the, the, the one with the red scarf and throwing it at the other um, while the other is, um, you know, he sees um, lips moving and there's, uh, there's an ice cloud coming out and the, the fire and the ice meet in the middle. And then you can also, you can now hear them uh, the guy who threw the fireball, he says, uh, with a mouth full of saliva, like, he's talking like this. It cannot go on like this. You are useless. Useless you are. And you have a thin voice. I didn't do anything. You are just an angry, angry person. And now that you're closer, you can see that they are actually not um uh, floating on water it's um let's see uh i think they're standing on they're standing on a sunken bridge and uh, there's a canoe that bobs uh, nearby them um so what do you do do you do you try to you trying to uh uh, I try to get Eucharist attention to this because I feel like he'd be the best at assessing what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I uh, he sort of spies. I like, puts he yeah puts his uh, like hands up and squ squints into distance and can he can tell that these these are these are two con these are two conjurers, uh possibly a, 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 a like a master and a student. Um, uh and they harness the power of elemental magic so i don't recommend we get too close to them Con conjurers are a tricky lot and um kill wolf um what do you do i want to come closer squint look and be like hmm i don't know looks like dangerous things what do I know? And he kind of like sits down, looks at his companion and says, what do you guys want to do? I don't want to mess with these guys. I think we should just, I look for Agathon. And I'm right that the river runs right underneath the bridge where, that they're standing on? Uh, it's more or less like, um, maybe the bridge was on a side arm of the. Uh, uh, okay, then, I, then I'll sort of say, the river runs that way. We can we can steer clear around them. Yeah, I think we're gonna just try to steer clear around these these guys and let them let them try to kill each other. Um, when you um, sail on, you see um, like uh, Agathon, you again because you you are trying to um, find the the current of the uh, original river. You can see that there's um, how was it called? A, a fin um, sticking out of the river. It's 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 a, that's like a, a huge thing. Whatever animal belongs to the fin must be massive. Must be big as a like a VW a beetle or something. And it moves towards the um, the two uh, sorcerers. Uh, I'll, I'll point this out to everybody on the boat. Look there. I'm curious I'm what happens. To... Uh, they seem to... overly bold and uh, about to be brought low. I'm going to uh, keep kind of cheating us away from the fin. Yeah, which is a uh, which is a good move because the. Um... Uh, the fish or whatever it is uh, stops for a second, like as if contemplating uh, its options, and then um, swims on towards the the wizards. Um, okay, Wolf, do, do you keep an eye on them or? Yeah, Kelwolf is keeping an eye on them, and he kind of like pulls at the ropes of Agitan, who's kind of like leading, and he says. He does this kind of nasal tackling laugh, and so it's like, <laughs> it looks like it's going to be quite a spectacle. I say we stay and look. I think we'll get a fine view as we 
come around the corner here. Um, and indeed, um, you see that um, there's a, like a gigantic pike leaping out of the water and um, burying his uh, razor-like teeth into the shoulder of the, uh, the wizard with a, a red scarf, um, catching him and dragging him uh, under the water. Um, and that's the last you see of that scene. Um, so... Uh, we could feed the whole village with a fish like that. <laughs> Definitely. Or a fish like that could feed on the entire village. <laughs> Especially because it's underwater. Let's see. Let's make a... no apparent reason. So you see before you Six. <laughs> um, you see a weird thing. Um, so um this like it, it first it seems like so agathon again you're, you're in the front of the boat you see that uh first uh it is a it, it looks at first like a statue maybe like a huge stone statue um except that it is moving and it is moving um towards the you know in the direction that you are moving um it it walks in a very like precise deliberate slow way it has a uh it doesn't seem to have like from from your perspective at least it doesn't seem to have a head it seems to be like a torso with uh, two huge arms um Yeah, and it, it and it uh, also the the water around it seems to um, vibrate once in a while. So once in a while it stops, and then um, the water around it um, vibrates, and then he, he walks on. And you're closing. If you if you keep your um, speed, you will uh, keep up with the thing. Like we like we're on a. Collision course or something. Trajectory, <clears throat> but I mean, you can try to move around it. Uh, the it, it's every it's water everywhere. Um, yeah, it, it moves in the same direction at least. I'll call back and say, "Slow us!" A headless giant moves in our direction. And so it's not moving to your direction. I'm done to have a conversation with the headless giant. I uh, so I slow down to have a conversation with the headless giant. Oh, well, I think I'm asking you to slow us so that we don't meet up with it. <laughs> oh, God, thank you. Yeah, so this we don't have to. You, you are the wise one. <laughs> yeah. And I just the one who makes wise cracks. <laughs> can we see, now that we've sort of slowed down, can we see where it's headed and what it's trying to do? Um, yeah, let's see. So um, by the time you meet... Um, I mean, he's, he's, um, uh, moving straight north. So, and the, the river, um, takes, uh, takes a turn to the east. Um, 
It doesn't seem to be like there's a that there, there's a another hill, but it's further away. Uh, and actually, if when you're looking to the north, you, you now see what uh, the guy on the roof have see, has seen, which is it, it is either a gigantic pillar of black smoke that is very very far away, or uh, a less gigantic pillar of smoke that is closer by. And the giant is heading in that direction. And the the giant is roughly heading in that direction. I think I will. Um, so to me, this seems like a symbol of my faith. The giant with no head, who has was once great and strong and is now without the same powers. But I also know that wherever he walks must be deep enough for our boat. Uh, so I think he's been sent to us as a uh, as a guide. And I will ask uh, Dogen to steer us in his wake. A guiding star that, that wades the way forward. Yeah, let's follow the giant. Yeah. So um, you're following the giant uh, towards uh, a. So to the to the left of you, to the a little bit to the west, um, there are. Uh, there's a, there are a couple of trees. It's like a small. Um, I wouldn't call it a forest. What is that? What is a small forest? A copse or something? A copse. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it moves towards uh, a copse of some kind. Uh, you follow him. Yeah. Um, so he uh, and you can uh, again um, uh, Agatha, you can see um, that there's like a smaller current as if a side arm of the river um, that, that passes through this uh, course uh, and the and the giant is uh, is moving uh, along the uh, the old river arm, uh, and you can see before you um, the tree tops of a small copse, uh, and on them uh, uh, like a a huge number of uh, carrion birds. That are um, perched on the uh, on the branches, and they they move um, like very slowly. You follow the, the golem even further, past the uh, past the trees. This yeah, the, to me this seems like <laughs> the uh, messages from the low god are being revealed. We've come closer to death. We've come closer to ruin, perhaps our own ruin. Um, this whole scene has been a, uh, like, it's divine will manifest on Earth. And I feel like now we're approaching something something important. So I will I will argue that we follow follow the giant wherever it leads us. <clears throat> yeah, you, you um, so... By the time you know, like half a day on the river, the um, the sun is slowly uh, going down, uh, and sends uh, long autumn uh, shadows over the um, the lake landscape, and you see um, that uh, the birds are fat vultures. They are over. They must be overstuffed. They're so fat that while you're watching, one of them seems to, for, for no reason whatsoever, just fall from uh, a branch and, uh, and disappear in the water. Um, I'm sorry, what fell from a branch and disappeared in the water? Fat vulture. Okay. The whole, the whole all of the treetops are completely covered in vultures. Um, something big and dead around here somewhere. Um, 
but I'm always glad when the things we sh find are already dead. <laughs> that is true. So let's make a last uh, roll for this day because the the sun is about to go down. How are we going to be able to tell where we're going when the sun goes down and goes dark? That's usually when we anchor and just stay on the boat so that we don't just drift around loosely at night. Oh God, we're going to have to sleep on this rickety old thing then. Well, it has. Do you want to sleep on the on the on the in the trees with the vultures? Mm, probably not. No. <laughs> Let's see. So, so you're seeing um, before the the sun goes down, you pass the um, the, the the corpse, um, and you can see uh, that there's uh, some kind of statuette. Um, floating on the water, quietly floating. A statuette, you say? Yeah. And there's a in the last light of the sun. There's something uh, golden gleaming. So when you, when you say floating, do you mean kind of floating like that on the <laughs> surface, or like sticking up out of the surface? <laughs> no, it's it's. It's uh, it's not uh, moving deliberately or something. It's floating on the water. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And it, how how kind of big is it? Like, can we tell? Like, is it? Uh, it's anywhere? like this big, I would say. Like a like an Oscar kind of statue. Like, like, yeah, yeah, a little bit bigger than an Oscar. Okay. I think Kevin could um, I have up to the boat, I have up to himself, and dive in and try to get it. A good swimmer. Are you sure you want to do that? I mean, you um, saw what happened. You saw what happened to those those wizards. Yeah, they're, they're, back up the river. It's true. I think if you guys stay ready, how far are we from the statue? Um, maybe um uh, fifteen meters, which is forty-five feet. Hmm. Yeah, you could do it. If you guys are ready to pull the rope back, you'll, you'll chance it. I'll get ready to pull the rope back. Um, so I think... Uh, <coughs> let's see. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I have a spell called Detect Evil. Does that... I don't even know what that does, but could I cast that to sort of see if there's any dangers in the water? Uh, um, yeah, let's see. Um, so, trouble is, I, I don't think like a, a hungry fish is going to be classed as being evil. <laughs> is that is evil? It? It's just yeah. hungry. <laughs> just wants to eat yeah, right. What is the it? What counts is as evil? Find that some of the, the fish are actually evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, detect evil. The problem is we're working with two different systems. Uh, I need mm. to adjust uh, the black hack to what is written for uh, limitations. And limitations, they don't really have um, good and evil as such. Mm. So they're not uh, labeled as such. Um, but I would say like undead creatures, um, people with with uh, murderous intent uh, okay. would, would qualify as evil. But not natural beasts. Not a uh, fish. No. All right, then I'll hold. I'll hold the spell. <laughs> Good. All <time>. right. Um, <laughs> okay. You, you throw the you throw the rope. Did you make like a um, a snare or something? No, he ties the rope to himself. Oh, okay. He, he takes his robe off. He stays like basically naked with his scraggly body. Takes his knife, puts it in his mouth. And the title of himself, hands it to Agiton, it's like ready to pull. And it's kind of like this, ready to jump in the water. Nice. Awesome. So you dive into the dark water, which is um, surprisingly um, still warm, or not, at least not uh, ice cold. Um, 
and you swim towards the statuette and obviously um, there is this gigantic fin like no, from no. <laughs> and it moving, it's moving fast so what do you do how far is the statue from me right now? How far is the boat? How far is the statue? So, so what is your priority? Uh, getting the statue or getting uh, as fast as possible back? I think he's going to be getting as fast as possible back. He takes the knife out of his mouth and says, Pull the fucking rope! Pull the fucking rope! I started trying oh, to pull um, the fucking rope in. You, you, Chris, would like to take like his last, his last like uh, bag of like a. Uh, provisions uh, in a sack and like whirl it around his head and then throw it in the complete opposite direction to where Seal Wolf is. Yeah. And then cast his memorized light spell to glow from the bag of provisions as it sinks into the water. So it acts as like a, a lure for this fish to go for the, the provisions instead of Seal Wolf. Awesome. Um, so you, you see the, uh, the the big fin moving towards uh, Kale Wolf, and then the the bag of provisions uh, lands with a plunge into the water, not far from it, with the light shown on it, and he turns, and the fin disappears under the water. Um, so. Uh, what do you do? Um, I, am I far from the statue at this point? Uh, actually, you you are um, you are more or less passing the statue. It is uh, just about outside of your arm's reach. I, I well, you're you're out there now, so you might as well grab it and exactly. come back. Exactly, I try to grab it, and as soon as I do, I try to swim and get them to pull the rope and get back as quickly as possible. Cool. Um, that works. Um, you have in your hand, uh, like a, in real world terms, I would call it maybe um, not Egyptian, what's before that, a Babylonian or something, mm -hmm. statue. Uh, it's a gold edged uh, and cer ceramic, and obviously uh, hollow, otherwise it wouldn't float. Um, and it um, it depicts some kind of maybe cleric with a with a like a hooked um, staff. Am I back in the boat? Yes, you're back in the boat. I hand it. I look at it and then hand it to Agitan, and I'm like kind of like a bit shivering, still naked, with the rope, and obviously really shaken, and I'm like ah. I give it to Agitan and I'm like, you look at it. I hope it was worth it. And then he just kind of like sits down and puts his hand on his head and he kind of hyperventilates for that. I hand, uh, I hand uh, Kale Wolf some wine. I, he yeah. takes it. Thank you. And he just downs it. <laughs> and yeah, and Eucharist like puts a blanket like around your shoulders and pats you on the shoulder. Oh, I love this scene. <laughs> um, Agatha is I... enthralled with this piece of uh, thing that you've delivered him. And I think in the last light of the sun that this thing must be lit up. And I want to know what I can um, intuit about the culture it came from. Um, so, Richard, you need to help me, or, or anyone who is uh, familiar with D&D. &D. There is... The, uh, the knowledge one that is intelligence, isn't it? And then there's yeah, like yeah, the streetwise yeah. one that is... Uh, wisdom tends to be more like what you what you see and kind of uh, your, your, your instinct about whether people are lying to you uh, or what people's motivations are. And, and, and intelligence is memory. Yeah, and, so, and, so and test knowledge. Uh, I'd say test your uh, intelligence. Okay. Uh, oh, and we went all under, don't we? Yes. <laughs> yep. So that's a fail. Um, so the only thing you uh, can actually um, get from it is that it is a 
about uh, 250 gold coin worth. Um, and that it must be some kind of, um, what's it called? If you, uh, it's the stuff that you bury kings with. Uh, okay. Then while, uh, while um, Seawolf is all bundled up and drinking his wine, I'll bring it back over to him and say, this has more to do with your faith than mine. This much gold on something religious doesn't suit me. <laughs> he takes it and he cuddles it like a doll and it's kind of like just going back and forth like this and he just kind of hugs it and just like stays there silent fighting, shaking that back to normality. So now, um, you know, there's twilight around you um, you could theoretically sail further, but, um, I mean, the chances that, that you just run into, like, a, a, a rock or boulder or something, uh, is very big. Unless you, um, find some kind of light source that you attach to the front of the boat. Um, I feel like attaching light sources to the front of the boat is only going to attract those giant pike. Yeah, I think that's going to make us more of a target. Definitely. We, uh, we, um... we drop anchor. We drop anchor and wait until first light and then get moving again. Cool. Um, so... Um, do you, um, what's it called? Uh, do you, um, uh, um, set a watch or do you just, yeah, I can, I can definitely do, uh, I can definitely do first watch. And then, if you look at the uh, the picture of the boat, there's the um, the compartment, the part in the middle where you can, you know, um, sleep if you want to. Uh, you, you could stay in the back if you want to be uh, have some kind of privacy. Uh, and where is um, uh, where's Dogen standing, or, or do you like walk uh, over the deck? Do you have a light source with you? Uh, I'll do. I'll keep it. Uh, I'll just do a just mounted torch up. Uh, I mean, it's it's you know actually I'm not going to do a big light source because anything coming on anything trying to get on the boat is going to make noise. Uh, and anything, anything, anything coming from the river is not gonna. Anything. Well, yeah. Let's take that back. Let's light a torch, keep it burning for a while. Um. But uh. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm more stressed about the stuff that's not in our torchlight. Um. And. Um. So let's see. Uh, just making it well. Okay, so who's uh, who's next? So like after um, I don't know how how long do you wanna um, guard? Both. Looks like there's there's four of us, so we can do if we can each do a two hour slot. I thought that as well. So after two hours uh, and your torch is uh, you know burnt down, uh, roll uh, roll the usage die, please. Are you muted? Sorry, the torch is still going, so I can hand it off to whoever. 
I got, a, I got a six on the usage die, so. Killwolf can do the second. Um, and then time passes as well. Uh, and who do you wake? Uh, oh, sorry, wait. what do you do during the, um, what do you do during your watch? Is that, uh, is that addressed to me or Kerwolf? Uh, both, actually, because I didn't ask. I mean, are you just sitting? Are you contemplating your fate? Or uh, I think I'm sitting sort of on top of the, towards the front of the boat. And I, you know, every little bit I, I switch out to the back side of the boat, wherever somebody's not sleeping, and I can get a good view. Yeah, you can pass the, uh, the hut. Like on the right and on the left, there's a small uh, uh, space. And then uh, Keowulf? Um, yeah, Keowulf uh, sits at the front, then does a kind of walk around, sits again, then he gets bored, plays with his knife against the mast, kind of throws his knife against the mast for a bit, then he does another walk, and then he was, if everything goes well, he just wakes someone else up. Um, and who do you wake? Um, I don't know who's the third. You decide. Maybe you can. Uh, the, the one who you give. I'll wake. Uh, sorry. So you, you could wake Agathon to, to pass the statuette on. Uh, yeah, perfect. I'll do that. I'll wake Agathon and um, pass the statuette, pass the torch, and be like, <laughs> it's, everything seems quiet. You so giving me the statue because you want me to carry it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives me the statue. Thing. Like I haven't, I haven't got space for this. And uh, to be honest, it was quite traumatic getting it. I thought I'd not carry it. You asked me to carry a load for you, your own burden. You would put on me. He like looks at it and is like, I guess so. You could call it a favor, maybe. Very well. And I'll, I'll take and it and I'll put it in my bag, yep. He kind of like does two steps away and like shrugs his back, like his shoulders, does a step away, but then he looks back for a second and he goes, thank you. And he kind of like walks away and goes to bed. <laughs> so, um, Richard has to roll the, uh, the usage light again. Oh, should I roll it? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. To be so the, it, it's down to a D4 usage on the torch. Cool. So 1D4, right? Mm -hmm. Is it two? That is already four. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I, I, sorry, I just rolled it when you said. So it, it, oh, it's, okay. it, I got a two on the six, so it's now a D4 for that last. That's a D4. Intro. And um, Agathon, you, what, what do you do during your um, watch? Uh, there's certain um, meditations that we our order has for different phases of the moon and for the setting and the rising of the sun. Uh, I think maybe the moon is, I don't know, do you care what the moon is doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, to say whatever, yeah. Uh, I would say that it's sort of a sliver moon, it's sort of waning. Uh, and so it's an opportunity to reflect on um, letting go of pride and worldly possessions as the moon shrinks. So I'm sort of doing that as I pace slowly around the boat. So is it fair to assume that you are not like super focused? Yes, <laughs> it's totally <laughs> fair to assume that. So then make a, um, uh, a wisdom. At least focus yeah. on the wrong thing. Focus on my meditation, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, could you make a, a wisdom test with a disadvantage then? Sure. That's 2d20. Take the highest. The highest. Right. OK. So what do I need? Let's do there. Got these two.
Uh, the highest is a 14, and my wisdom, I believe, is a 13. So that is a whiff. Yeah, while, you, um, while you're walking and meditating, you have the feeling as if um, you, maybe you, um, like a fish or something, bumped into the, um, into the boat or, or like a floating log or something, but um, it's not really um, anything out of the ordinary. Um, so... I would say this is a perfect spot to maybe cut and talk a little bit, if, if you uh, agree, that is, and talk a bit about uh, how we proceed. Um, so my aim was to, to get across uh, like the, the main themes uh, and the, the theme of the, um, of the village at least was um, scarcity and chaos. Um, I, I think we hit the, the the sweet spot. I'm not sure if we have hit the driving up river yet. So I wouldn't want to fast forward, to be honest. I would just play on a little bit, like the, the next session, if you agree, and not not um, like you know force it or something. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more hazards that can mm. befall us on the river there. And the, 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 the headless giant, we want to maybe see him again or, or them. Um, so yeah, I, I would say, <laughs> or maybe not, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it would be cool if we, um, if we see our uh, adventures the next uh, session a bit more on the boat. I, I love boats anyway, so that's that's always a good um, like. I also liked how your um, how your characters started to like make connections on the boat because now it's a confined space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Shall we do? Uh, maybe I stop the broadcast and we can do uh, roses and thorns.